All right. So really the next thing is to pull off these, oh, we pull the pistons and then pull off these valve lifter guides. So these are the valve lifters. They lift up when you run the engine. In fact, you can see them running. Oop, that was a dumb idea. There you go. So, engine's running, you can see them lifting around. They basically ride up and down on the cams. And these keep them. That's not bad. Checking for wobble. How badly they're worn. Not bad. Not bad. You can see this one's filthy. Let me zoom you in on that. Right here on this one. Just junk inside of it. A lot of rust. This is why we got to take it all apart and clean that kind of crap out. Good. All right, so that'll be the next thing to do. All right, hey, I jumped a little ahead for you. I was just trying out a technique to see if it would work, and well, it worked really well. Uh, so the technique was for removing these tappet blocks. And what it was is that you just unscrew the screws that just hold it down. There's a gasket under there. You just take a little heat from a torch and just get it not red hot. You don't want to damage anything, but just warm up like a hot cup of coffee type of temperature to the aluminum around the tappet blocks in this area. Uh, when I was here, I ran it all the way around here. And that should expand it enough that you should be able to pull it out. And I use the covers of one of them with the threads on it as a handle to pull against. So let's do this one now that I know the technique works. At least it worked for that one. There's no telling what could happen for this one. I'm going to clean some of this crap out of here. Oh, and I did forget to mention, there's a gasket as well that sits underneath the cover. And as you screw on, it'll seal up against it. So there's another gasket on that surface as well. And here it is as an example. So that's something to keep in mind too. All right. Get a small brush, synthetic. Okay. First thing I'll do is remove these screws. So I'm going to take my pick in here and actually pick out material. You can see that just came out. Let me zoom in closer actually. So you can see in those screw slots, as I take my pick in there, I'm actually removing material. And this is good because that means now my actual screwdriver will be able to sit farther down in there and fully engage. Okay, that one's pretty good. So same technique, I'm gonna put the screwdriver in the slot. I'm going to take my wrench against the screwdriver body because it has a square body. I'm going to spin it. And there we go. As soon as that first piece breaks away or lifts away, the rest comes really easy. There's a little conical washer under these, under the screw heads. You have to make sure to grab those as well. Let's see, they come on this one. No, so it should still be there. I'm gonna take my pick at it. Let's see. 
Hmm. Looks like it's missing on this one. Are you sure I didn't grab it? Nope, my mistake is right here. Here you go. So here's a little conical uh, lock washer. Oops, it's a terrible view. There you go. And that just sits on the screw head like so. It just sits like so and it locks the screw down. Uh, you also do want to torque these down just a little bit, but that helps it. So there's one. Alright, now we're going to do the next one. Alright, now we can go for the main tappet spot. So I'm going to get my torch. I'm actually going to pick out a little bit more of the crap behind it. Make sure there's nothing in the way, vertically at least, on top. So. There we go. Alright, so let me back you out a little on the view. Okay. Take my torch. And actually, I'm going to screw this down first. There we go. That's just a little handle. Well, it's going to act as a handle so I can pull the block out. And in fact, I'm going to remove the gasket off of the other surface here. Uh, oh, okay. At least as much as I can, I don't want to scratch anything. Nope, yeah, I'm going to remove that later so I can remove it properly and not use the pick. All right, but now, well, you can't hear me over that, but I'm just going to take the torch and just let the flame direct mostly at the aluminum. I'm not trying to heat up the tappet block. I'm trying to heat up the aluminum, basically the area that has this bore in it, this bore, but for this one, and let that expand with some heat. Not too hot, and just enough so I can slide the tappet block out. So let's do it. There we go. <laughs> there we are. So there you see, there's our tablet block, came right out. We have our gasket, uh, part of it's here, part of it's still on the surface. And we have our cam follower right here. Cam follower sits in the tablet block like this. Uh, the wheel's directed by the slot there. And it'll ride up and down on the cam pushing against the valve stem to lift and close the valve. 
there we go. So there's one, uh, the second one. So I'm gonna do the rest of these and well, talk to you guys afterwards. All right, that last one gave me quite a bit of trouble. I let it sit to cool off again so it would all contract back because the actual tappet block started getting hot. And then I did it all over again with some heat. Uh, you saw me use the screwdriver there. I wasn't prying super hard. It was just slightly stuck and needed a little assistance. So just prying like this and then leaning carefully. If you have to hammer the screwdriver in and then pry with all your might, it, it's not right. You'll you'll mar up the surface and it's not a good idea. So if you use it, just use it lightly and try not to use it at all. Cool. My excuse okay? Perfect. All right. Next, we're going to try to remove the pistons off of the, con uh, the connecting rods. So yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I'll move the camera to let you guys see it, get a better view. All right, here's the pistons. So... The way you remove these is there's a spring around the wrist pin, which is this hollowed cylinder you see running through the middle of the piston. It's the wrist pin. There's a little, it's kind of like an E-clip, but not really. Uh, but that's acting in there to hold that in place. So what we want to do is remove that. Get my pick on it. Try to pry it up. Let's try it this way. There we go. Yep, oh, ready to go. <laughs> Here it is. Ooh, it's kind of dirty. All right, so this is what the clip looks like. It's a very weird shape. But this flat is what goes in, so it would sit like like this. Oops, let me get that in there. It would sit like this on that pin. So now that pin's out. Well, the clip's out, so now we can get the pin off. The pin is pressed in place, so the trick, apparently, is to put a little heat on it and drive it with a socket. So let's uh, do that. I'm careful though.
we go. Not too much harm to the piston. Of course, you want to put the heat on so you don't have to wail on it so hard. Otherwise, you're just going to be bending it back and forth. This one already has a problem, though. So, well, we'll be addressing that. But when you put these on, you got to be careful as well. So there, there we see the clip on the other side as it would be holding in place. Oops, sorry. There you go. So here's the pin. This is the side we took off with its clip. Here's the side that hasn't been taken off yet. That's how it would sit. All right. I'll bag it all up. I'm actually gonna remove this clip too and then we'll do the other side. Oh, actually it's taking this one off now. Here we go. Here we are. Very nice. So there is one of our pistons. Oops, too zoomed in to get a good view of it. So there's one of the pistons. I'll label this and put it away. All right, the second one was a bit of a bit more of a challenge. It had a little rust on it, but it came out pretty cleanly. Didn't hurt anything in the process. One thing to note is that I won't be reusing these pistons because it's they appear scored on the side. I was going to use new old stock ones, uh, so I was a little more uh, harsh, let's say, uh, when I was taking these out. Uh, if you wanted to reuse your pistons, you would be very very delicate or you can get the proper tool for it. But uh, we're not planning on reusing these ones. Interesting thing to note is this piston has the most carbon buildup. In fact, the other one doesn't even have any on it. Is the other one, it's pretty clean on the front. Uh, the rings are perfectly fine. All of them, all three of them. Yeah. But on this one with the carbon buildup, the oil ring's actually locked up. Uh, it's hard to tell if that was before or after this bike sat, but you know, that makes sense. The oil ring was locked up, getting more oil into the cylinder or the combustion area, and well, it's just going to be more carbon. So, it might have been one of the reasons why this kind of got put away to pasture. It might have been a smoker because of this oil ring, but that's just a guess. So, there we go. Our two pistons are removed. So next is, I believe we'll want to take off the distributor, or uh, I should say the um, points uh, section. That distributor would be a word for it. I don't know exactly what Harley calls it, but it'll be a, this thing. This whole section actually goes down into the cam chest here on his gear run. So we were moving all that. Now what we do next? All right, so for the distributor, this little locking piece, it just, this little piece of a little spring just holds the cap on. We have that there. And then the next piece is the, hold on, where'd you get? Actually, I believe it's the clip underneath that holds it off. Grab that. Remove this just by pulling it out. There we go. You just spread them. You can pull those out. Then you should be able to get in here. Lift 
this little tab out from underneath. I'll show you after. Yeah, that. Here we are. There you go. This little spring piece. It's a spring in this direction and this direction that clips in there. You can see the little bumps in it when this sits up in there. These bumps here, focus, these bumps in it is what rides, or is where these go. Like that. Oops. Like that. So, that's another piece. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So then this comes off the top. There we go. And then this wire comes out with it. So there's our whole points unit. Here's the bottom, and here's the cam lobe, or the lobe that runs on the points and actually actuates the points. Well, we'll check, check all this out eventually later, but yeah, there's that. So then we can get to this by means of two screws in here. Uh, let me zoom you in and we'll uh, watch that. All right. So this is looking in on top. The distributor is just like this. And we pulled that off. This wire feeds through this hole here. And that's how that goes on. So we took that off. Now we have two screw heads. We'll go ahead and use our pick on those slots, clean them out like we have done all the others. Okay. And these are pretty clean since they're hidden so well, they don't get a lot of crap. Right? Take our screwdrivers and our wrench, and do the same thing like the rest of them. We'll put it right on, put the wrench on, tighten it, get a twist, and these are pretty loose. Try the other one. Wrench on, oops, open it up a little. And yeah, these are very loose. There we go. Undo them. There's one with a little lock washer underneath it. Let's see. A little lock washer. Put that aside. Here's the second one. with its lock washer. There you go. These screws are the same, so don't have to worry about mixing them up. Okay. Now we should be able to just take this plate off. And this is all one piece. So this plate houses this lobe with the shaft that goes all the way down with a gear on the end. So when you pull this out, you'll pull that whole thing off. So, pick this up. You can see it's spinning. That's because it's a helical gear in there. Neat. All right, so we'll pull this out. There we go. And there, you can see the gear. And it's gonna drip oil. There we go. There. There you can see the gear on the end. And there's a certain amount of backlash that's allowed in this, and we'll measure that at some point too. Look at the bottom. Not terrible. Oh, it looks like we have a spring right here. Uh-oh, I'm not exactly sure what that goes to. Probably is a wire hold. Oh, you can see it. Probably holds the wire. It looks like it goes in this hole here. So, I'll keep that as well.
But there we go. There's the distributor taken all the way off.